Hello and welcome to polyplane.com. Today we're going to be talking about fillets and chamfers. So when you're working in a model, this is something that's a really easy way to add some additional detail and depth to what you're building just by simply rolling over or flattening an edge. I've got a few products here on my screen, a, a desk, a camera, a laptop, and some dice. And each of these uses fillets and chamfers in an interesting way to kind of make the form what it is. Now, what a fillet is, is essentially the softening of a curve or an edge on a shape or form. If we were to take this desk and put it under the microscope, what we would see is there's actually a series of fillets, essentially, that create the edges. The higher precision a piece of furniture or product is, and they want to create like straight lines, the smaller those fillets are going to be. So on here, these edges that I'm highlighting in white, if you were to look at those under a microscope, you would actually see a, a small rollover. You can do it with your desk in front of you. Just look at the corner of the desk really, really close. If you have a really sharp-edged desk and you look with a magnifying glass, you can actually see a little rollover uh, of where those two material faces work. This is essentially what a fillet is. It's a controlled softness of the edge or a curve. Likewise, with the dice, it's a little more obvious you can you can see it's catching a highlight and creating the details and where these three fillets come together makes a nice soft corner and then even where the divots that make the dots are you can you can sense that there's some sort of softness there the camera uses fillets in kind of a different way where it's actually taking a sweeping fillet here it starts out with a small diameter and then it goes up and then you know this whole area gets a little bit wider and it's a larger fillet there, so it's actually creating a design element uh, versus an edge. And then with the laptop, um, you may remember a few months ago I was talking about doing things right, and I was talking about laptop keys, and uh, if you were to model them, like putting a little rollover on there, uh, that's that's a smaller image of a larger idea of this, this laptop is just filled with little fillets everywhere even though it's a fairly rectilinear design. This also goes for chamfers. Chamfers are the same thing versus a soft rollover. It's more of an abrupt edge. Uh, so let's, let's take a look in Rhino and see what some of these look like. So I have a cube here and I'm going to give it a, a series of fillets just by typing fillet edge. We're not going to work with curves in this exercise. It's just going to be just actual solid models. That way you can kind of get a, an idea of what it does. And it works exactly the same for um, curves. It's just fillet versus fillet edge. So we'll select all the edges. And the default radius right now is at an inch. So I'm just going to hit enter. So we can see how the, the form kind of constructs itself. We're going to go in shaded view so you can see these ISO lines a little bit better. So what's happening in these corners is you have three fillets mating together to create this round edge here. And, you know, it's it's softening the form. Now, if I were to reduce that radius, we'll say to a quarter inch, it's going to become nice and tight. Now, with a chamfer, you can get sort of the same feel just by typing chamfer edge. And I'll use the same measurement of a quarter inch, select all my edges. And so you can see how it's sort of a little bit more of a blocky form. But if you're zoomed out, if I were to look at this, look at these, we'll look at these side by side. So you've got your chamfer there and fillet edge. I'm going to grab all the edges of this. And so from, you know, a bird's eye view, they don't look that much different. And this is kind of important too when you're working. If you just need some sort of slight detail, I recommend going with a chamfer just because it doesn't take as much time for the computer to process and calculate uh, all those curves. So when you have a fillet, it's a little bit more intensive for the computer to figure out. But when you zoom in, it might look a little better. So it's a little give and take. So this is how these two tools appear. Now what I want to show you is something that's a little bit Rhino specific. And that is the fact that you can adjust your fillets and chamfers on an edge. So if I type fillet edge, I'm going to select this edge and hit enter. So you have these handles. So the handle enables you, if you click on it, to increase the diameter, which means that you can have a larger radius up here and a smaller radius over there. So if I hit enter, 
it's going to make a larger radius on one edge and then a smaller one on the other. This is kind of cool because if I were to want to say fillet edge, this edge again, and we're going to add some more handles in. There's a little add handle so you can just click where you want to. Um, and now I've got five different handles. So we'll make this first one an inch, this next one a quarter, this one an inch, this one a quarter, and this one an inch. Let's see what that does. So you can see it's trying to figure out how all those fillets work together. Now this was a little bit of a a little bit tricky because you know you're you have all these fillet handles together, but you can see what's starting to happen over here is you can start to control how that edge rolls over in certain points. Now of course this was a little bit of an extreme example. We can scale it up. Let's try this on a longer version. So what I'll do is I'll type fillet edge. Select my edge here, and we're going to add some handles. We'll go there, there, and there. And what you're going to see is I can actually can tell this one to be a quarter inch. We'll leave that one at one. We'll make this one 0.25, one inch on that one, and then 0.25 on that one, and hit enter. And you can see you can um, you can actually dis make a, a cool sort of wavy fillet. So you can add details like this just using a simple uh, fillet command. Now the one cautionary thing, I had a user send me an email and he had this form that he was trying to fill it together. And so there was this form and it had these tight curves to it. I'm actually gonna increase the mesh here. And he wanted to roll over the edge which seems straightforward enough. You select on your edge and you hit enter and it breaks. It's like, it doesn't know what to do. So I'm gonna leave that actually so you can see what's going on here. So when you already have round edges like this and you try to uh, fill it as a secondary operation, what's gonna happen is the curve that's creating the fillet needs to be able to travel along that original edge. If it can't do that, like when it gets around a curve like this, it's gonna have a little bit of a hard time. The second part of this problem is my diameter of my fillet was way too big. So what happens is you have a crossing face here and that causes all sorts of distortion. So what I would recommend for something like that is to actually build this shape, but build it a little bit differently. So we could extrude this and then I'm gonna fill at the edge, but I'm not gonna give it such a great radius. I'm gonna give it like a quarter of an inch and see, we're still having issues, but we're getting closer. One thing you can do is when you get a tight curve like this is to add handles in all of the, the quads of those curves and then reduce their radius down. So we'll make that 0 0.01, we'll make that 0 0.01 and 0 0.01. And then we'll add additional handles in between there that are like, an eighth of an inch each. And so now when I hit enter, all of my larger radiuses are out here in the middle and then where it has the challenging spot, you just reduce the radius down. The other idea that you can do is actually to do a two rail sweep where you would uh, duplicate the edge and then offset it, whatever you want your radius, 0.25 in this instance, and then that'll give you your sharp curve and so you can use this as a second rail define your profile of your curve here and then just run the sweep around it cuz i'm running out of time here i want to get into the chamfer so let's do, let's talk about that a little bit so with the chamfer tool it's essentially like the fillet tool in just about every way only it's doing a sharp cut so if i type chamfer edge and i select this edge again i can add handles so we'll say, we'll add a handle. I'll put one here and here and here. And then I'm gonna leave those, I'm gonna leave the alternating ones at a quarter inch and make these larger ones one inch. And again, it does the same thing. Now with this one, there's something weird going on with the geometry here that's causing it to ripple out like that. That could be a whole bunch of things. That could be the point count that the curve was used to originally create. But essentially what we want is this, um, this nice smooth transition. So what I would do in that case is just trim the geometry back so you could 
you know, create a line, extrude it, and then use that as a trim to get the, the better, cleaner version of that chamfer. So going back to our original objects here, you can see how you've got a series of fillets. You've got some slight chamfers here in the, in the side of the camera. So play around with the tool. Um, you can, you can use it for a lot of really neat stuff. Um, and the other thing I'd like you to do is just kind of go around your house and take note of objects and edges and see how, how fillets and chamfers really are every, everywhere you look. You're not always going to notice them, but they're definitely there, especially in places you couldn't imagine like your printer or your, you know, your keyboard or wherever. So check it out. And it's a really powerful tool. And, um, I think it's, it's a definitely worth knowing. So thanks so much for watching and have a great day.